Welcome back to the Hank Strange Situation, Lifestyles of the Locked and Loaded. All right, welcome back to another breaking news with Ammo Land. Of course, we've got my friend John Crump of Ammo Land News joining us here. And today we're going to talk about bogus Florida firearms registries. Which we've talking, which we've spoken about before. Excuse me. Uh, we're just going to do a follow up, right, John? That is correct. We are going to do a follow up, Hank. Okay. So, um, just in case there's folks out there that are watching this and they're not aware of the first story, just bring us up to speed on the initial story that folks can find on Ammo Land. Um, I don't know. Let me see if I can pull it up. Check out Ammo Land News if you can. By the way. Yeah, go down to contributors, then you can click on that, then click on my name, it'll be on there Yeah, if you want to look at it. Uh, Basically, there is a county called Charlotte County, Florida, Mm -hmm. which was compiling a list of gun owners by using the Finder database. The Finder database is what they use for pawn shops. They take the information and they send it over, and what it's supposed to send over is the serial number of the gun make a model so they can run the numbers to make sure it's not stolen okay yeah this is just florida law um i'm sure there's other states that have similar law if you if you're selling a gun you know to a gun store they they um there's a a particular process they go through right and a specific database of information that's held for some period of time to make sure it's not stolen well what happens is it's supposed to go over to the sheriff's department. They run the serial number. If it doesn't come back stolen, the data is not supposed to be kept. Okay. This is in accordance with um, a Florida law. Mm-hmm. And so how long is that is that information supposed to exist before it goes away? Only until they run the, run the data. Okay, so once they run it, if that gun is not stolen yeah. and everything's clear, then that info is supposed to disappear. Yeah, they're not supposed to have any list of gun owners uh, due to a Florida statute. That's a, yeah. I think it's 790.335. Yeah. 790.335. Okay, so because if you do that, you have a de facto registry, which yeah. is uh, illegal here in Florida. You definitely do. Firearms, yes. Okay, so um, the the initial story we did with was that there was a specific sheriff, I think, in Charlotte County, that you know that was uh, engaging himself in this activity, somehow getting info and then copying that info out and creating his own database. Is that right? Yes, but it turns out it's past Charlotte County, and uh, Charlotte County was also sharing the information with other departments. With other counties, okay. And uh, so initially when we put up that story, before we get into the follow-up part of this, um, there were a lot of people that actually reached out to us. We had a lot of information sent our way, thanks to the folks that were doing that. Um, we also uh, invited people, if if they felt they were victims of this, to reach out to us. So there's a lot of things that you've been going through because of that. Um, it's going to take us some time. There's a lot of information. There's actually like a really uh, deep story, I think, at the root of this. Um, are there yeah. any little things in there that you want to catch up on that maybe folks might not know um, or aware of? since you put out the initial story yes it it turns out charlotte county was sharing it with the uh, northport police department as well the list are sending over there we have leaked emails basically that show that they were sending the list over there and they're also okay northport also uh, sarasota county Okay. was also doing it. Sarasota Sheriff was also compiling the list through the Finder database. And here's the scary part. The Finder database was never supposed to be transmitting the names and addresses of the gun owners. Okay, so that was some kind of glitch? It, it was a glitch. Uh, letter, which is the nonprofit corporation which designed the system, went ahead and fixed the glitch. We okay. have... For, we have information from an unknown source, an uh, unnamed source, mm-hmm. who've not, who who've not allowed to speak about it. But mm-hmm. we were able to confirm through that source that they did fix the information. Now it's only transmitting the make, model, and serial number of the firearm, which is what it's supposed to be doing. Okay, so the so the folks that wrote that code, they figured it out. Was that recently that they figured out that there was a backdoor or something like that, or it was kicking out information it shouldn't? I'm trying to determine exactly when they fixed it. Mm-hmm. 
So I don't have an exact answer right now. Okay. All right. So we're still working on that. Now, when we initially put out that story, the Attorney General, um, Ashley Moody, right? Yes. Um, a lot of the feedback that you got from the Charlotte County uh, Sheriff's Office and even from Ashley Moody, I think, was that this this registry or what these guys were doing was not illegal. Is that true? Well, Ashley Moody never responded to us. Okay. The local prosecutor's office, the lo local uh, like attorney general for Charlotte County, the mm -hmm. attorney's office for Charlotte County, came back and said, it's not a list. There's nothing okay. wrong with it. But, I mean, if you, you saw it, it definitely was, it was a, a list. list. Um, what, yeah, what compromise is a list? I think it was a list. It had names, you know, and other information on there tracking and, a person to a yeah. firearm, right? And rows and columns, too. Yeah, on rows a spreadsheet. and columns. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, um, so it's like kind of like what's the definition of is, you know, one of those kinds of things that they that they were trying to use to say they weren't doing something illegal. Yeah. That was the feedback. So now, what's the I follow up? The, Go ahead. I call it the Bill Clinton ex, uh, excuse. Yes, exactly, exactly right. So now, what's the follow up on that? What's the developments that are coming out now? Now, due to the awesome work that Florida Carey has done and also the public pressure, so mm -hmm. everyone out there who contacted Ashley Moody or whoever, mm -hmm. the public pressure really has worked. Okay. And uh, our, a state's attorney, Amira Fox, is now investigating um, the misuse of the system. And it does appear that there was a misuse of the system. Oh, okay, so they're investigating it. Uh, this is like the initial phases or stages of their investigation? Yes, yes. They have okay. subpoenaed and pulled records that I'm, I mean, that's all I can say about that. They, they subpoenaed and pulled specific records. Okay, and then they're, and then they're talking specifically to certain counties. Correct. And uh, in letter, which is the nonprofit corporation which designed the finder system. Okay, which wrote the code. Okay, yeah, so it uh -huh. seems like there was a gross misuse of the system. Yeah, I would say it's gross. So when you were looking at this, just give us, or you know, I know there's certain things you don't want to talk about, but how? What, what's the numbers of this list? Like, how deep was this list? Uh, it was fairly deep. Anyone who went to a pawn shop to pawn the gun, when you pawn something, you don't sell it. You know, you give it as collateral mm -hmm. until you can pay back your loan, then you get it back. Mm -hmm. It was every list. Uh, I saw thousands and thousands of names on there. Okay, ten thousand, twenty thousand, thirty thousand. What do we think? What are we talking? Probably closer to about sixty. Sixty thousand. Okay. Yeah, and here's another thing. Um, one of the places, uh, Sarasota County, when uh, a reporter requested the list. Mm -hmm. sent an unredacted list, which is also a big no-no because you have names, addresses, everything of gun owners. Mm -hmm. So if you want to target someone for robbery of a gun, yeah, now you have a list. Yeah. And anti-gun groups would love to get their hands on yeah, that. Yeah, effectively doxing people. So um, the reporter sent that to you? Uh, what happened was there okay. was a reporter mm -hmm. that requested a list. He was thinking that he was going to get a, re a redacted list. Okay. But they sent him an unredacted list. Unredacted list. So anyone, so basically, if they sent it to that reporter, anyone else requesting it that they responded to, that got out there, right? Yeah, and we have seen anti-gun groups try to get list of gun owners in Washington State, and recently in Pennsylvania, an anti-gun group called Gun Sense U.S. tried to get private information of gun owners from the sheriffs up there. Mm -hmm. And the funny thing about that story is, not to get off on another mm -hmm. story. But after I released my story, I put their email address and contact information and the story. They wrote me requesting or demanding that I take off their private information because they didn't want their information out there. Yeah, but they're putting other people's information out there. I think, look, some people looking at this might think this is just a Florida issue. This is definitely going on around the country right now, right? I'm sure there's uh, other places all around the country, other sheriff's departments, other counties using the same software that had this kind of glitch in there well, that people were getting access to. Well, the finder software is unique to Florida. It is? Okay. 
I've, I've checked other states. I've checked uh, Virginia and I've checked uh, Pennsylvania mm-hmm. and a few other states up and down the East Coast. And I haven't been able to find any, so that's a good thing. Okay. Yeah, that is a good thing because there are people that want to get to create these lists. These lists should not be created. It violates in so many different ways our constitutional rights, you know. Um, if so, the software ran correctly, it, this never would have happened. Right. My question is, why isn't it automated? Why doesn't the software go ahead and run the serial number once you enter it in and check for a stolen gun? Yeah. I know in Virginia, I used to own a gun store in Virginia, mm-hmm. and the gun store, we would enter, we had a system where we could enter a serial number, and it will say if it's mm-hmm. a stolen gun or not. So people... Right could come into the gun store if they wanted to do like a transaction, but they don't wanted to go through the whole, you know, transfer system. Mm-hmm. They could pay a $2 fee to a gun store or how much the store charge, state charged $2, but whatever the gun store wanted to charge them, they can run the serial number to see if it's not stolen. And that was like automatic. It wasn't going through a system. So I'm wondering why Florida doesn't have something like that if other states do, do have stuff like that. Yeah, why is the sheriff in the way? Now, at the end of the day, so let's switch back to Florida. Um, here in Florida, well, I guess anywhere, to be honest with you. If the sheriff is somehow in that system, he has a responsibility to not abuse that, right? Correct. It's it's a felony to mm-hmm. keep a list of gun owners in Florida. Mm-hmm. So let's say there is, for some reason, there's law enforcement in the middle of that system. If there's nothing wrong, if there's no crime committed there, if that gun's not reported stolen, they need to move on. They need to deal with, oh, this one was reported stolen. Let's follow up on that. But if it wasn't, they don't need to be keeping a list of, of individuals who, um, who are pawning their guns. So um, the, the, the uh, list that was sent out to that reporter, do you know how big that one was? Uh, I would have to look again. Okay. Um, th- th- Fairly that was large. Several, uh, several hundred names. Several hundred names. So what can people whose names are on all these lists that are being compiled, what can they do about this? Or do we have to sit around and wait for, like, the uh, – you said the state's attorney is looking into it right now? Not the attorney general, right? Well, the state's attorney who works under the attorney general, and they won't investigate anything about the, the attorney general. So um, go ahead. Mm-hmm. What I would do, I'm not a lawyer, so I can't give legal advice, of course. Right, right, right. Uh-huh. But I am sure if the state's attorney finds abuse, that there is grounds for some type of class action lawsuit. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. So how long do you think this is all going to take to get worked out for them to make this investigation, find out what these sheriffs were doing, um, get their hands on the lists? You know, maybe destroy these lists or, or or give the folks whose names were on the list some opportunity to, to um, yeah, maybe be part of a civil lawsuit or something. Something that will make sure this doesn't happen again. I, I don't think it's going to be a, a, a quick process, probably mm-hmm. a couple months. Okay. But in, in this case, I think they should take the time and find out exactly who pulled the list and everything else. So I'm not expecting a quick mm-hmm. uh, like resolution, and I don't want a quick resolution. I want them to take their time and find out exactly who pulled what. Mm-hmm. Okay, and this article, like we talk about stuff a lot of times before it comes out. It's not out yet, right? No, it comes out Wednesday. Okay, so you guys will be seeing this this particular video Wednesday once this comes out. What's the meat of of what's going on here in your story? What's like the big thing that you found out, and what was your process of, of finding out this? like this information the meat in the story was gross negligence on not only the software company but the sheriff's department for exploiting mm-hmm. a hole in the system okay like if, if if you found a website that had like unencrypted credit card numbers mm-hmm. you couldn't take those and use it and be like hey i use those credit card numbers but they were out there so yeah so this is clearly okay. this is clearly a crime right in my opinion, I would say so. Okay. Okay. Um, but I, like again, I'm not the attorney uh, right. investigating it, and I'm not a lawyer, so I can't mm-hmm. say for sure. Right. But it, to me, it seems pretty clear cut. Yeah, I think anyone who took advantage of this and shared this info and um, or received this info and used it, um, I, in my opinion, they committed a crime, and and it's like. Uh, 
you know, it's a it's a massive misuse of the public trust, in my opinion, you know, and I see it even up there on the level with people who, you know, there's lots of other things in society that we don't want people to consume or look at, right? Not just our private information. There's other things like that that we say, hey, we don't want you doing this. And this is one of those things. Anyone that did this, you know, they should not they should definitely not be a sheriff, in my opinion. I, I would agree. A uh, sheriff is supposed to like enforce the Constitution. They take an oath to a Constitution. I've been talking to a sheriff um, out in Mon- uh, uh, I think Montana. Mm-hmm. Um, um, no, no, Arkansas. Sorry. Yeah. I don't Arkansas. Know why it's on okay. So that's an article you have on the. Um... Yeah, that, have, that yeah. just came up today. Uh, Chris Brown. And yeah, he, I'm going to throw that up while you're talking. Go ahead. Yeah, and he doesn't believe in, like, gun registration lists. He believes that they're unconstitutional. He also believes stuff like red flag laws are unconstitutional as well. We need more sheriffs like that that's willing to take a stand. In fact, he said that he's not going to enforce any red flag laws or extreme risk protection orders because it violates the constitution Mm -hmm. yeah you know what i started reading that article just before we did this it looks very interesting and and it's good to know that there's sheriffs out there going to stand up for for what's right if something if a law is created that violates the constitution of the citizens that you're supposed to protect then it's your obligation to protect them I think in the case of these sheriffs who are taking this information illegally, sharing it illegally, and compiling um, lists and therefore registrations on on citizens, um, that's the same kind of thing, right? They're they're abusing the people that that gave them this trust. So we should we should do something about those guys as well because they're just out there, you know. It's almost like a vigilante kind of justice, but from the sheriff's department. That's supposed to uphold the law, going against the law. And then with that article that you're talking about, this guy, I know there's people out there that are going to say, well, if there's a red flag law, he's supposed to uphold that. Well, not on, not if it's not constitutional. Yeah, I, I talked to him and he said that he took an oath of the Constitution. He didn't take mm-hmm. an oath to uphold anything they told him to do or take right. orders for anything they told him to do. He yeah. took an oath to uphold the Constitution. Yeah, that would make them de facto kings or something like that, right? Correct. Of that, yeah. And this this is the whole reason why we, this is what people need to realize about law enforcement. They're citizens, but they're citizens that we entrust with um, our lives, right? And, um, and, and uh, the security of our property and all kinds of things. But these people are citizens. I don't think they're separated. They're not above the law. They're not above the Constitution. You know, they're supposed to serve. I know there's someone's going to say that, you know, the courts have said they're not supposed to serve to serve us or protect us. But that's what they're supposed to do. If they're not doing that, then we really don't need them. Yeah. The court says they have no constitutional duty to to serve and protect the citizens. Mm -hmm. But that doesn't mean that they cannot serve and protect the citizens. And sheriffs like Chris Brown thinks that he absolutely should. Yeah, that's a good read. I invite anyone to go read that. So now let's say there's folks, because I think we got a lot of feedback from this, right? If if there's folks out there that um, would like to do something about this, what what do you think is the best way for them to go about that? Who do they need to speak to out there to uh, to move this investigation forward? I think it's going to move forward no matter what. Okay. I would say what they need to do is they need to join Fuller to carry. Okay. Um, I'm the the VA state director for Gun Owners of America, and I'm saying they need to join Florida Carry first. Right. Yeah. If you're in Florida, then then go ahead and join GOA. Yeah. We're always trying to tell people to support the organizations locally that are fighting for you on the ground level, as well as the national ones. Right. That's what that's what I absolutely yeah. believe. Pick a local one, and then pick a national one or pick multiple ones if you can afford it. But if you can't afford it, start with the local one, then go to, then go to a national one, whether it's us at GOA, whether it's Firearms Policy Coalition, Second Amendment Foundation, or even the NRA. You yeah. really need to support someone. Yeah, we need to fight for freedom on all fronts. Uh, maybe what we'll do is we'll get someone from Florida Carry on the podcast. We, we've got John. He comes on the podcast from time to time. Right now, we're kind of like in a... You know, we're not doing the full week this week uh, because there's 
been a bunch of different things going on. But once we get this uh, kicked back up, we'll definitely have those guys on. Um, is there anything else you wanted to add to this story before we wrap up here, John? No, I'm pretty sure that's what we have so far. I'm going to keep on it and see what else I can find out and also keep everyone informed about the outcome. Yeah, absolutely. And I'd like to invite people. I, we've already done this. Um, there's folks out there. If you have a story like this, it doesn't have to be just in Florida. John's in Virginia. I'm in Florida. We're fighting for the entire country, <laughs> you know, from California to New York. <laughs> I've probably done yeah. stories oh. in all 50 states by yes. now. Yes. Yes, and we and there are stories coming to us all the time. So if you if you feel like you're in that position, um, something unjust like this is happening to you in regards to the Second Amendment, let us know. We are getting a lot of things. I would just caution people: like if you know that you did that, you're kind of wrong. <laughs> you so know? we will find out. Yeah, because we have to investigate these. The, I know there's some people reaching out to us, and if you're wondering why things haven't been done about it, it's because we have to investigate it, look into it, and make sure this is legit before we, you know, push further time. But it does take up a lot of John's time to uh, to look into all of these yeah. things. So help us out, and, you know, if you know that you have a good cause here, then let us know. If not, you know, uh, maybe take yeah. another route. When we started doing this, I told Tank up front that, about 99% of the stuff that we get is going to be BS. Yeah. And I think he's learning that right now. Yeah, I am. But listen, we, we want to do but this we, because we, we want to help people. It. Yeah. Exactly. We do, yeah. We want to help people. We're willing to do the work. We're willing to. But it ha it needs to be just causes, right? Because there's folks out there that are looking to kind of like stop us from doing what we're doing right now. And if we get if we get behind the wrong people here or put out the wrong things, it'll just make it worse. And at the same time, there's, there's folks out there that have been done wrong and they really do need the help. So if you're kind of like burning up our time, you're getting in the way of that. So uh, try not to do that if possible. Correct. Uh, how can folks get in touch with you, John? Uh, on Facebook, Real John Crump. Instagram, Real John Crump. If you have a story, contact me over on Facebook. It's probably the easiest way. Uh, Twitter, I'm at CrumpySS. And I have a YouTube channel, mm -hmm. uh, John Crump 2. And if you like my work, you can always support me on Patreon.com forward slash John Crump. That money goes a long way. I have something called the Two-Way Project at TwoWayProject.com where we're going to be giving away a, a, a canic to a single mom. And awesome. then after that, we're going to be doing an AR for a single dad. Cool. Yeah, I like that. I need to, uh, you need to come on the, the podcast and we'll talk about that. Uh, yeah, I know I was supposed to do that last week. I totally forgot. Sorry. Yeah, I'm going to be in, Red, I'm going to be out at Red October this week. So. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah, we'll get it worked out. I think that's a good cause. Um, if anyone wants to know any information, any further information about that, or you want to help out John with what he's doing, get in touch with us. Um, you know, we'll, we'll be here doing this. Definitely check out the podcast. It's on the Lifestyles of the Locked and Loaded channel. Um, I want to invite everyone to comment here. Tell us what you think about the story. Uh, make sure you thumbs up, subscribe, and of course, ring the bell so you can be notified every time we put up videos like this. We're going to get into a rhythm here once we get a whole bunch of different things worked out, and we'll be doing this more often and uh, covering lots of different stories uh, from coast to coast here, John. Yeah, no, and no and sleep you can... for you. Huh? Yeah, I don't get any sleep already. Yeah. Um, yeah, remember, you can subscribe to my YouTube channel as well, at John Crump 2. You can ring mm -hmm. the bell and do everything that Hank says. Yes, always absolutely. always forget to tell people to do it, but go yes. ahead and do it. Please do support John. Um, you know, he's he's doing great work here. So are the guys at Ammo Land. So support those guys. Um, I don't know. Do you have anything else to add here before we get out? Uh, no, if you're out in Vegas this weekend, hit me up. I'll be out there for yeah. Red October. Red October. Red October. Okay, cool. All right, guys. Thanks so much. We'll see you.